Wouldn't it be great to know you could take care of yourself physically no matter what the situation? Absolutely. I bet all of us at one point or another have felt vulnerable in certain situations, whether that's walking through a tough neighborhood or taking the bus late at night. Those situations can affect the way we travel and our independence. That's why the CNIB is addressing the issue by developing their Living Safe Workshop. It's designed to self-defense for people who are blind or have low vision. The popular two-day workshop combines personal safety lessons with hands-on judo instruction. Let's head over to Halifax's Laura Bain before we get out of this carriage to go get a demonstration from the Living Safe Workshop. I think judo is one of the best uh, self-defense and martial art for visually impaired. That's instructor Jason Scott introducing me and the other workshop participants to the art of judo. It's all about feeling your opponent or attacker and uh, I don't think you need to see in order to throw your opponent to the ground. So the movement that we're going to do in Japanese is called Osorogeri, okay? Osorogeri in Japanese means big outer reap. There's going to be a loud bang, so I don't know how the dogs are going to enjoy that. So when she throws me, it's going to, it's going to sound like this. Jason recruits me to help him demonstrate a move. But the real key to his instruction is his verbal descriptions. My left hand's gonna go grab the top of her right hand, okay? As I step in with my left foot beside her, I'm pulling her towards me, and my right hand is gonna go underneath her chin, okay? And I'm bringing my chest into her shoulder. Now as I'm here, I'm stepping my right leg behind her. Okay, so now I'm only catching one leg of hers. So I'm kind of putting my right leg in behind her right leg. Okay, got it so far? So as I do that now, I'm gonna push her backwards on her chin and she's gonna fall to the mat. Then the fun part, I get to throw Jason to the mat. Despite our size difference, I take him down with surprising speed. One by one, everyone takes a turn. Participant Patricia Connors was keen to take this workshop. Doing this program, uh, emotionally, it gives you a better sense of yourself and maybe allevi alleviate that anxiety just enough so that you're not afraid. For participant Megan Meek, a self-defense workshop had been on her to-do list for a while. I know there's always concerns about uh, just being out and about on your own, whether it's vision related or not. And now she's discovered some simple judo moves to get the upper hand in a threatening situation. To get up there and actually hit somebody when you're being told to hit somebody is definitely different, but I've definitely learned, you know, that in those situations, that I might have more of an instinct now about what to do. The Living Safe workshop also included discussions on a range of topics including risk and vulnerability, stress management and assertiveness. I end my time at the workshop with one final judo lesson. What we're going to practice is, is a certain strike that I call, it's called the hammer fist. When you hit the pad, you are going to hit the pad three times. Every time you hit the pad, you're gonna say no. No! Good, feel out again. No! Good. No! Good. I'm hoping they get the confidence to, uh, to use any of the stuff that I show them today. Um, I'm creating a tool belt for them. They are in danger that they can pull it out of their tool belt and use. No! 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 Good, good job. So the first one she... We've gone from inside the Kalesh into Plastarm. You know, Dave, one of the best things that probably comes out of that workshop is the confidence it gives the participants. Agreed. Everybody should know a little bit of self-defense. It's great that the course is tailored for the blind and low vision community. Just knowing you have the ability to defend yourself, it makes all the difference. And that heightened awareness of safety and risk, it changes the way you carry yourself in the world. Absolutely. Whether you're at home or on the road like we are right now.